it's time for another mercilessly vengeful episode of the Hardcast. I'm your host, Chris, and today I'm joined by Patrick. Buttman the Great! And Steven. <laughs> the man whose night is so Zeno. Tonight's review slash discussion is about the 2006 Russian action fantasy film Wolfhound, directed by Nikolai Lebedev and based on the novel by Maria Seminova, starring Alexander Bukharov and Oksana Akashina. He was condemned to death, but survived to wreak revenge for the murder of his clan. The last member of the clan of the Greyhounds became a fearless warrior by the name of Wolfhound. After escaping the mines and killing his slave master, Wolfhound sets out on a journey with his constant companion, an earthbound bat. Wolfhound has but one desire, to destroy the warrior who slaughtered the village of the Greyhounds. So, Stephen, did Wolfhound open your celestial gates, or did it leave you with a torn wing, unable to take flight and escape the evil clutches of Jadoba? <laughs> Jadoba. It looks like I couldn't escape this movie, man. I'll say I was the bat this time. This movie was, I want to say, it says right on the box, Conan meets you know, Lord of the Rings. And I'd say that's almost a fair comparison, though I can't see that much Lord of the Rings in this movie. I know. I see more Willow. You haven't seen Willow yet, so you don't know. Yeah, to say the Conan, I can definitely see Conan in there. Almost he- He-Man type. You know, you see Conan everywhere, especially in your dreams and fantasies, though, Stephen. Oh, <laughs> damn. He caught me. I thought that was just a secret, man. Well, this is when you when you spent the night over here, you kept mumbling his name, and I don't know. Oh damn! That's I know it, 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 your your pants got all moist. It's <laughs> such a big sword. <laughs> well, the action is definitely what's going to shine for this movie. We've got blood, we've got gore, we've got decapitation, you've got arms being cut off, heads rolling. You've, the blood was pretty okay. I've seen better blood effects. It poured out pretty gruesomely in this movie. It came out in wriggles and gallons of. Driggles? I've never heard anyone say the word driggles. Yeah. Okay. Only on the hard cast. Driggles. <laughs> 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 seriously, it, it was it was a fair amount of blood and lots of killing and brutality. Fight sequences were all classic, throwing people into rivers, dodging attacks, punching, kicking. Wolfhound was all over this movie. It had that type of unbeatable until the very end, but even then he still owns everything. It was kind of, I wanted to see him struggle a bit more. Because he was on top of every enemy. They'd fight for a little bit, then Conan, then he'd completely like rape him. I mean, it was one-sided fight the entire movie. So that was a little bit of an issue for me. The story, this, for, to say, talk about the story, he was little, average kid, run-of-the-mill countryside type deal. All of a sudden, these guys come in horseback, just burn the city up, flaming arrows, torches, cutting people. It's massive murder for no Yeah, that's like the opening of Conan. So in that area, it's very similar to, the, to Conan. Right, and people just start dying for no reason. And you see Wolfhound's father, like he puts up a fight and gets owned his pregnant wife wolfhound's mother something terrible 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 happens to her right in the beginning of the movie after that i was wow i know what kind of movie it was because you see the blood and you see like how extreme they get right from the beginning so nobody is safe well and- considering it's a russian movie and it, in the very beginning and it said based on a true story so i knew what to expect <laughs> <laughs> They start a true story. <laughs> right. If they want their tourist trade to go up, I don't think showing this movie is a good idea. Everyone's going to be like, I don't want to go to Russia. I don't want to run into Jadoba. Well, there's two sinister enemies in the movie. You've got Maneater and you've got Jadoba. Badass character. Maneater, you see in the very beginning, he puts this humongous scar on, on Wolfhound and it's bad. And he becomes a slave for, for Maneater. He w- lives his life as a slave, slowly building up regret and hatred and h- building up his internal strength until one day he finally breaks out. Out. He kills his slave master and seeks the only man that matters right now is Maneater. He finds Maneater raping a girl. He finds him in the middle of raping her and he owns him. Okay, quick. Seamless fight. It just gets crazy from there. Knowing that he was only a small fry compared to what Jadoba had in store for this but movie. Yeah, you have to mention though, he saves the girl and then the girl grabs that wooden key. Right. Yeah, and then starts joining uh, his group and follows him around. Yeah, this movie has some RPG elements definitely going on here, man. <laughs> he would save one person, that person would join the group and offer their services. So by the end, he'd have a healer, a blind healer. He'd have a normal girl, good with intelligence. He'd find a, this, a religious guy who can translate ancient. It was crazy. He was like a scholar, yeah. Yeah, it was, and he was the fighter, so he had a, a well-rounded group. And then later on, he had a princess with him, too. Definitely, this movie could have been an RPG. <laughs> I could see that in here. How he saved everyone, the girl herself and the blind man were in in the very beginning. Not too complicated how he saved them, but how he saved the scholar. 
that scene was ridiculous. And one thing I do like a lot about the Wolfhound character is he's kind of like one of the mill guy for the most part. You look at him, he's got this big scar on his face. He looks kind of like a badass. For the most part, he's pretty quiet. He just kind of goes about his business, does whatever, doesn't try to get in anyone's way or anything like that. There are certain things that set him off. Those are the things that are very personal to him, and slavery is an issue with him because he used to be a slave. And whenever he sees anyone being put down or subjugated or whatever, he always tries to step in and do what he can for the person. I mean, he doesn't really expect anything in return, but usually the person person always wants to join his group they feel like they owe him and things like that and he's like all right whatever you know you do what you want <laughs> it was a cool scene because he's out in i guess a courtyard type area and they're beating the shit out of this slave guy and persecuting him because he knows how to read all these texts big, and yeah big into religion right mm -hmm. he just trying to jumps in and at first he wasn't going to do anything about it but they kind of go too far in his opinion and he just kind of jumps up there and he's like enough you know just let just let leave him alone the guys like you have to fight for him and blah 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 and, and then he fights and he, he wins the guy's freedom and all that and then the guy thinks he owes him and he was just funny you know the guy's like, wolfhound says well come on come with me you know get something to eat and he's like oh no you've done so you've done enough already and then wolfhound's like all right treat yourself and he like walks away <laughs> <laughs> and then the kid gets owned by the uh, slave master's mer uh, mercenary and then of course wolfhound has to come back and bring him back to his friends and heal him and from that point on the guy's pretty much part of the group yeah, that, that was over the top. It was freaking funny how he would save the world, but almost nobody can save Wolfhound. But Patrick, was... actually, Patrick has something to say about that scene where the mercenary oh, uh, stabs. Uh, <laughs> that was funny when we were Well, uh, I wanted to say before that that um, I thought it was interesting how his character, Wolf, even though he had a sword, he didn't really want to use it on the, on the Slave Master. He wanted to buy him and he didn't have enough money, and the guy says, trade your sword. And at, the end, right at that point, he could have easily killed those two guys. No problem. But I think, you know, he gave up, he gave his sword for him. And it was kind of interesting because that's really a lot to give. Yeah, I, well, I think that kind of demonstrates that Wolfhound is not violent by nature. He only fights when he has to or when it's for a greater purpose. It's something he believes in. Mm -hmm. But that, uh, that slave master with the furs and stuff, do you see the slave master come, to come up to that uh, the, the guy? It looks like he was hugging him. Wow. <laughs> and then I thought he had this look on his face. I thought, I miss you. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> don't, don't leave. Don't leave me. And so I thought, that's what I thought. I thought, I was like, oh, God, this is going to be gay. He's going to be like, don't leave me. But instead, he gets, he stabs the dude. That's why he's hugging him. He's Well, maybe he was in love with the slave. And he was, if you know, if I can't have you, no one can. <laughs> Nobody can. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, moving on. Go ahead, Steven. <laughs> yeah. The big deal with the sword, now that you mention it, we have to yeah. mention how he came across that sword. Jadova had this badass sword. If I were to compare it, I'd say Golden Sun. Yeah, on this, Game is not, this is not a sword that you get at a pawn shop. No, nah, this sword was ridiculous. Let's say the wind sword of, of something. We'll just give it a name because this sword was causing mini tornadoes. When he would swing the sword, these sound waves would rip through all your defenses. One slash would take out a group of guys and Shinobu was just swinging that thing like mad. And like, it is this one scene where he's, he's crossing the road with his companions. He just rescued them. They're hurt. They're tired. They want something to eat. And this normal group comes walking by. They're like, like, you know, get out of the way, we're crossing. He's like, we need a ride, you know. Yeah, it's like a can convoy of carts and all that being pulled yeah, along. Yeah, you know, can you spare a horse or can you take us to the next possible village? He's like, no, okay, I'll, I'll be a guard for you. He's like, I don't need any guards. And he walks away and, and then he's seeing his groups. He, he's desperate. He jumps in the way. He says, no matter what, I need a ride. I'll take out all your guards if I can prove it to you or something. And he, he challenges them and he, I mean, this guy, Wolfhound, owns every single one of them, of course. He's a good guy. He, he stops the fight. I get the point enough. You know, I'll let you work as my mercenary. He gives them, you know, a ride. And as they're crossing the road, they get a surprise attack by Well, one uh, thing I'll mention too was the guy had an ulterior motive for letting them join the group because he noticed the girl. He gave the girl the um, princess's cloak. He knew they were there was a strong possibility that they were going to be attacked by Jadoba's men or Jadoba. And Jadoba wants to get the princess, wants to kill her. So uh, he put the cloak on the girl, but with the, you know, the uh, insignia or whatever, the royal insignia. So if anyone attacked, they would think that she was the princess and the real princess would be left alone. Same, so yeah. It added a little depth to the story, that especially that scene. Because mm -hmm. you you could see Wolfhound, he was trying to figure it all out. He was like trying to piece it all together. He knew what something was up, but he just couldn't figure it out. Yeah, it, it caught his eye, and he's like, what is this? This is going to play a, a big part you know, later on in the movie. But you see, they get jumped by Bialz... I mean, I'm going to say Bialz... Yeah, it's Bialz... <laughs> it sounds pretty close. Jadova's team, they come in, just flank them, and it's a bad fight. But Wolfhound shows his... I know, <laughs> you make it sound like it's a sports thing. It's like Jadova's team, and it was flanking <laughs> maneuvers, and there was no referee. He wasn't paying attention. And... Yeah, I don't think...